السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا افتح العارفين يا أرحم الراحمين uh, بسم الله today إن شاء الله we're going to uh, uh, continue with our seventh seri- uh, session of the series of Tafsir Surah Al-Kahf إن شاء الله uh, last time we stopped at uh, the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his mercy, he is not going to punish those who transgressed in this dunya immediately. Just out of his mercy, he is giving them uh, a chance that if they want to repent, there is still time. Because once death comes, repentance stops. So there is a chance for those who want to change, for those who want to take advantage of this of this uh, uh, time that Allah has given them, and this is out of the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So we uh, we stopped at uh, ayah fifty nine last time. وتلك القرى أهلكناهم لما ظلموا وجعلنا لمهلكهم موعدا. And those, the, and, uh, those towns, we destroyed them. And then uh, we destroyed them when they did wrong. This is the, the punishment of the people previously to the nation, who came previously to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because as I mentioned last time, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to punish the people of the of a messenger while he is alive, then he is going to destroy the whole tribe. We saw how, what happened to the people of uh, Lut alayhi salam, to the people of Nuh alayhi salam. Allah saved the righteous ones and destroyed the whole, the whole uh, uh, group of people, uh, all the people. But... Out of his mercy, Allah is not going to uh, do that for the people of Sayyidina Muhammad for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Just to give them time, to give them a chance to repent if they want to do so before that. وَجَعَلْنَا لِمَهْلِكِهِمْ مَوْعِدًا There has been a fixed time for the destructions of those uh, uh, of those nations who belied their messengers. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us the story of Sayyidina Musa and what happened to him, how he thought that he himself is the, um, the, the person who knows the, everything and there's no one who has more knowledge than him what happened. So let's go, inshallah, with this story. Once Sayyidina Musa was uh, 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 giving a khutbah, and um, he was asked, who is the most knowledgeable? So he said, I am without referring knowledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that there is someone who is more knowledgeable than you. And that was the answer when Musa alayhi salam talked to Allah. And we know that Sayyidina Musa used to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anytime he he wanted. So he said, I was asked this question, I said, I am. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, you have, there is someone who is more knowledgeable than you. So when Sayyidina Musa heard that, he said to himself, but I should, I should learn from that man. I should know what, what I don't know. So he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can I meet that person? 
On that, I told him that you will find him at the junction of the two uh, rivers, when the two rivers meet, you will find him there. And he said, how can I, how can I, how can I know where that place is? And Allah told him, you take a, a, a fish in a vessel and you, you go, you walk until the place. When you, when you lose this fish, then you know that you will find this person in that area. So Sayyidina Musa did that. And what happened now? Sayyidina Musa said, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهُ لَا أَبْرَحُ حَتَّى أَبْلُغَ الْمَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ أَوْ أَمْضِيَ حُقُوبًا So, Sayyidina Musa took his uh, uh, boy servant with him, Sayyidina Yusha' bin Noon. So he was, uh, Yusha' alayhi salam was with him uh, to serve him, but also to learn from Sayyidina Musa. He was not just a servant. He was someone who was seeking knowledge also. So he said, Sayyidina Musa said to his boy servant, I will not give up. I will keep going. I will keep walking until I reach the junction of the two seas, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told me about. Or until I had to travel uh, for, for a long time. The word hukuba in Arabic is plural for uh, the singular, and the singular word is hukba. And the hukba means a long period of time. And it was uh, so that this period is about 70 or 80 years old, uh, or 80 years. The span of, of the hukba is 70 or 80 years. So when Sayyidina Musa said, حقبة, he made that word plural. So the least of the plural is three. Okay, so that means, let's consider the hukba is 70 years. Uh, 70 multiplied by three is 210. So this was what he said, what Sayyidina Musa said to his servant boy, I will keep walking. Even if I have to walk 210 years to meet uh, the person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me about. And we know we knew earlier that when Quraysh wanted to, to check on Sayyidina Muhammad, وسلم, then they said they they asked him uh, several questions, and one of them was about the, uh, uh, the, the people of the cave, uh, the man who uh, wandered around the world, and about the spirit. So the point is, Sayyidina Musa said, did not give an answer because he does not speak from his own inclination. If he doesn't know the answer, he wouldn't, wouldn't answer it. And that's why he said, I will answer you tomorrow. So it lasted 15 days until the, on the, on the last day he said, inshallah. Now, my point is, Sayyidina Muhammad did not have the knowledge, all the knowledge. The same thing, Sayyidina Musa did not have the, the knowledge. And that's why he wanted to learn more. And that's why he wanted to go to see that, to meet that righteous person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told him about. So he, taught, he promised himself to go walking, even if it took him a long time. Now, this means, this gives us, a lot of lessons. The most important thing is that we have to seek knowledge. We have to remember that the more we learn, the more we realize that we are ignorant. We know nothing. Allah's knowledge is vast. We, we, we know nothing. Some people say, okay, I'm going to be 
uh, a lawyer. Another would say, I want to be a doctor. Another would say, I want to be a, a, a space person. So each one of this is a science by itself, but no one knows everything. Allah will give special knowledge to special people so that you might see wonders on those people. So if you do not have something, do not deny what others might have. Some, sometimes you would say, MashaAllah, this is a Mubarak person. This is a blessed person. He knows a lot. And the way he speaks is not, is not the way that we speak. Remember, there is something called al-ilmu al-ladunni. Al-ilmu al-ladunni, the divine knowledge. And Allah will give this, uh, some of this knowledge to certain people. So here, Sayyidina Musa wanted to go to meet that righteous person to learn from him al-ilmu al-ladunni. How did we know that it was al-ilmu al-ladunni? We knew that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in uh, uh, later, فوجدا عبدا من عبادنا آتيناه رحمة من عندنا وعلمناه من لدنا علما. We're going to get there in a moment. So now what happened? Sayyidina Musa started walking with uh, Sayyidina Yusha. And of course, when you want to go on a trip, you prepare yourself for that trip. So they took their food. And Allah told him that you take a fish with you. And when you lose this fish, then you will see the place where you, you, that would be the meeting place. And there's a lesson here. When we are going on a trip, we take something to help us along the way. We take something to eat, we take something to rest. We, we might have a tent, we might have uh, water, we might have food, we might have several things to help us during this journey, during this trip. Okay, now look at the journey that we are taking towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a long journey. And to be able to go, we have to have pr some provision. Our provision is the provision for the soul. We have to take care of our soul during this journey. It's not only our body. It's not only food. It's not only drink. It's not, not just to, to wear some cloth. No, we need to take care of our heart. We need to understand, we need to remember that if our heart is sound, then our journey is going to be sound. If our heart is good, then our journey is going to be successful. It's a long journey we are taking. We have to have something to help us along this journey. We have to have our reading of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to have a good connection to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to have a good connection to, to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to, to pray special prayers before Fajr to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know this is the closest time that Allah is uh, to, to us. We have to get nearer also to him. We need special care. We need special provision along our journey. And we are depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that help and that care. So now Sayyidina Musa started with his journey. فلما بلغا مجمع بينهما نسيا حوتهما فاتخذ سبيله في البحر سربا. 
So by uh, uh, when they when they reached the junctions uh, the junction of the two seas, they forgot their fish. And if we have to look into the Arabic word here, nesiya, the alif at the end of the verb means both of them, dual. So how come that both of them forgot? Who is responsible for the food, to prepare the food and to serve the food is the uh, boy servant. But what happened is that both of them forgot about the fish. This gives us a clue that even the leader should not leave everything for the servants, for, the, for those who, are, who take care of the, of the caravan. Why? because he should be responsible about everything. When they are ready to leave, he should check the area after they leave. Did they forget anything? That's this, this uh, thing, this small thing is not the servant's work. It's the leader's work. So both of them forgot about this fish and what happened to this fish. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here uh, made the Sayyidina Musa when they reached uh, the, the place of the junction uh, of the two seas, uh, they reached this area and they felt sleepy, so both of them slept. And there was a, a special rock that they slept at. So the fish sensed the, that this is something uh, uh, special. This is something that would give it life. So it jumped it jumped and what happened to it, the fish moved vigorously and jumped and took its way on the sand, on the sand until it reached the river. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given life to this fish. And it is said that there was a spring of life at that uh, uh, area. And that's why the, uh, the fish sensed, felt that uh, spring of life. So a drop of water of that uh, uh, spring came to the fish and that's what made the fish get life again and it moved. Now, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, we said that the, um, the fish uh, went on the sand until it reached the sea. So what happened here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that trace uh, that, uh, clear and kept it clear. So when Musa alayhi salam and his boy, uh, his servant boy, uh, just woke up, uh, they started walking again. So they for, and uh, Yusha knew that the fish was not there, but he forgot to tell Sayyidina Musa about that. Now they they went. Uh, a little further, and Sayyidina Musa salam, they felt hungry, so he asked his uh, servant to give them the, the, the fish to eat. At that time, Yusha alayhi salam remembered that he forgot to tell uh, Musa about the uh, uh, what happened to the fish. 
So when he told him, he said, this is what we wanted. So what did, what did happen? Now, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا جَاوَزَا So when they went further, قَالَ لِفَتَاهُ آتِنَا غَدَاءَنَا لَقَدْ لَقِينَا مِنْ سَفَرِنَا هَذَا نَصَبًا Musa said to his boy servant, bring us our meal. Truly, we have suffered in this, uh, in this journey. We are hungry. So, Yuksha alayhi salam said, قَالَ أَرَأَيْتَ إِذْ أَوَيْنَا إِلَى الصَّخْرَةِ فَإِنِّي نَسِيتُ الْحُوتَ أَنْ أَذْكُرَهُ He said, do you remember? Do you remember when we went, when we uh, took ourselves to the, when we stopped at the, uh, when we stopped at the um, place where, uh, where we rested? So I forgot, I indeed forgot to tell you about the fish. None but shaitan made me forget to remember it. Or made me for, uh, shaitan made me forget uh, to, uh, for, uh, to tell you that we lost it. So, Shaitan. Now, وَاتَّخَذَ سَبِيلَهُ فِي الْبَحْرِ عَجَبًا And it, this fish took its course. So, its path into the sea was a strange way. What does ajaba mean? Strange, something strange. So the story by itself is strange. The fish that we prepared to eat got life again and it went until it reached the sea and jumped into the water. So Sayyidina Musa here said, قَالَ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنَّا نَبْغِ فَارْتَدَّا عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمَا قَصَصَ so Musa alayhi salam said, that's what we have been seeking. This is what we have been looking for. They wanted to know exactly where the, they missed or they lost the fish because that was the place where Allah told him that he will be meeting Al-Khadr alayhi salam. So they went back their footsteps. Qasasa. So they were following the traces. What happened? They found. فَوَجَدَا عَبْدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا فَوَجَدَا عَبْدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا آتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِّنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا So they found one of our servants, Abdan min ibadina. Remember the word servant. And this is a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when someone is a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is at the highest ranks. Remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, got Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into the Isra. He said, Subhanallah, asra bi'abdihi. Subhanallah. He was the one who got Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go up into the heavens. Abdihi, bi'abdihi. So being a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a, the highest of honor. But being a servant to people is humility. So they found one of our servants, Abdam min ibadina. What about this, per this person, this servant? Atainahu rahmatan min indina. On whom we have bestowed mercy from us. Wa'allamnahu 
مِلَّدُنَّا عِلْمًا And whom we had taught knowledge from us. And this is what I just mentioned. الْعِلْمُ لَدُنِّي The divine knowledge. The divine knowledge is the highest of, the, of all the knowledge. And it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a, a secret that Allah gives into the heart. So they found a man and he was a blessed man. And Musa greeted him and Musa introduced himself. Sayyidina Khadir told, asked him, are you the Musa of the children of Israel? And we know Israel is Sayyidina Yaqub. It's another name for Sayyidina Yaqub. And Musa said, yes, I am. Or are you the Musa of the children of Israel? The, the prophet who was sent to the people of Israel. Of Israel. Okay. So now, what happened later after that? قال له موسى. Now pay attention to the to the to what Sayyidina Musa said. هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا? Can I? Can I or may I follow you? And you will teach me from what you have been taught of sound judgment. You have the knowledge I, I don't have. You have the knowledge that I don't know. هل أتبعك? Can I? May I? This is something, this is the politeness, how you have to be with your teacher. The teacher should have a special respect. And this is called adabu ta'allum. So you ask politely. You, you, you just humiliate yourself to the, to the teacher because he has the knowledge. You want to learn from, from him. And what about if someone has the divine knowledge? You should show... Uh, so much respect for your teacher. He said, you will not be able to have patience with me. And how can you have patience for what you do not encompass in knowledge? Sayyidina Khadr knows that Musa is, uh, alayhi salam, is a prophet, is a messenger, and that he is a person of Allah. He is a friend of Allah. So he said, you have your way, I have my way. You cannot be patient with what I, I, I do. So this is the condition that, uh, that, that is there. Both of them are on different paths. Each has his own way. You will not have patience because you as a messenger would give your judgment according to the outer things. I, as a person of Allah, would give my judgment according to the heart, according to the inner things that I know and you don't know. How can you be patient? So Musa alayhi salam says, Satij qala satajiduni insha Allahu sabiran wa la a'si laka amra. So Musa alayhi salam said, if Allah wills, you will find me patient and I will not disobey you in any order. I will, I will be submissive to whatever you want. 
So, قال قال فإن اتبعتني فلا تسألني عن شيء حتى أحدث لك منه ذكرى. So he said, then if you follow me, do not ask me about anything you see until I make a mention of it. Until I mention it to you. Until I myself talk about it. So this was the condition. If you want to follow me, you do not ask me any questions. They have that agreement. فانطلقا. So they set out. حتى إذا ركبا في السفينة خرقها. They were walking. They wanted to cross the uh, from one bank to the other bank of the river. So they uh, they wanted to have uh, to go on a ride uh, uh, on a boat. So they the the people of the boat. There was a boat passing by, and the people recognized Al Khadr alayhi salam. So they took them on the boat, and they refused to take a charge for that. They did not take money for them from them. They did not take anything in return. So حتى إذا ركبا في السفينة خرقها until they had embarked on the ship on the boat, Al Khadr made a hole in it. Where he took a, a, a piece, a piece of the wood of the ship away uh, out. So when he did that, Musa alayhi salam looked at him and he said, Musa said, the people gave you gave us a free ride, yet you have broken their, sh their boat. You have you are messing up their poor boat. The people are going to, to drown. Why did you do that? Indeed, you have done a horrible thing, a terrible thing. So Musa at this point thought of destroying other people's property. He couldn't stop. He couldn't stay silent. So he said, he talked. But what was the answer? So Al-Khadr said to him, did I not tell you that you would not be able to have patience with me? You would not be able to stay silent? Sayyidina Musa remembered that agreement and he said, قَالَ لَا تُؤَخِذْنِي بِمَا نَسِيتُ وَلَا تُرْهِقْنِي مِنْ أَمْرِ عُسْرًا So he said to him, uh, call me not to account for what I forgot and be not hard on me for my affair with you. And he, please forgive me, I, I forgot. That's it. فَانْطَلَقَ so when they went down on the ship, they kept walking. Um, so they set out and they proceeded until they met a boy and Al-Khadr killed him. Ghulam is a young boy who did not reach puberty, time, puberty age. So he killed him, he killed that person, he killed that boy. See, the Musa thought that the first incident was transgressing some property, but now he's killing a, a person. It's a bigger, it's a bigger problem now. So he couldn't stay silent. So Musa said, have you killed an innocent person with no reason for killing him? Indeed, you have committed a clearly evil thing. Now Musa said, uh, Al-Khadr said, 
قال ألم أقل لك إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا Al-Khadr said, did I not tell you that you can have no patience with me? If we go back uh, till ayah 72, we, we have a similar ayah. قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ صَبْرًا But here, قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكَ إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ صَبْرًا So the word لَكَ here is just to emphasize you. I said to you. The previous ayah, I said, you cannot uh, be patient. But here, I said to you, you cannot have patience. Qala, Sayyidina Musa, uh, remember it again. So he said, Qala, in sa'altuka an shay'in ba'daha, fala tusahibni. So Musa alayhi salam said, if I, if I ask you anything after this, keep me not in your company. If I object to anything, just um, let's depart. You have accepted my apology twice and you have received an excuse from me to break this company now. I, I, uh, I want... Uh, I will not uh, oppose you anymore, but if I do, خلص. it means let's apart, let's go apart. So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, uh, uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam apologized and made it firm this time. فَانْطَلَقَ حَتَّى إِذَا أَتَيَا أَهْلَ قَرْيَةٍ إِسْتَطْعَمَا أَهْلَهَا so now they both proceeded until they came to the people of a town and they asked them for food. They were hungry and they wanted food. So they reached a, a, a village and they saw people of the village. They saw some of the people and they asked them for food. Now they as they wandered in the village and they asked for food for pe different people for, from almost all people. But what happened? So they refused to offer them hospitality. They refused to give them food. They even refused to give them a place to rest in. And remember that there is something here to, to, to notice. When someone asks for food, then this is the most truthful question to ask. He is in real need. He needs something to eat. But if someone asks for money, you don't know if that person is going to stack that money with other previous money that he asks other people. But asking for food is something, is a, 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 is a question that there is nothing to think about. He is in need. He is in need for something to eat. So what happened? The people of the village refused to give them money they refused to give them a place to rest. And while they are going in uh, around the village, What did they find? They, they, they found a wall about to collapse. And Al Khadr alayhi salam set this wall up straight and they wanted to move on so Sayyidina Musa السلام, said you did something you deserve money for it we don't have money we cannot eat we cannot have a shelter why you didn't ask for money 
So Musa said, if you had wished, surely you could have taken a payment for that. You could have taken some wages for that. Now, let's go a little bit into digging into this word, into this ayah. يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَنْقَضَّ فَأَقَامَ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَنْقَضَّ the, the wall itself was about to collapse. It was about, if we want to put it in uh, uh, the human words, we say to die. How can we say that about things? Do you remember when uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to lean on a trunk of a tree and to give the khutbah to the people. And then they, he, they built him a pulpit just uh, with a few steps so that he can stand on and everyone would see him. What happened to the trunk of the tree? He weeped. The trunk of the tree felt that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, is not leaning on him anymore and he is a little, a little bit far away from him. So he cried. So even things have feelings. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went down and hugged that trunk of a tree. And he said, if I didn't do that, he would keep uh, weeping. He would keep crying until the day of judgment. Another example, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, used to hear the, the, the pebbles making tasbih while they are in his hand, in his blessed hand. So for Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, even in one of the narration, he said, لا تحزنوا على كسر إناءكم فإن لها أعمار مثل أعماركم. Don't, don't feel sorry that, don't, don't get upset if something is broken, if a big uh, vase is broken, if something uh, is broken, because these two have lifespan. The same, the same way as you people have lifespan. Something else, even animals feel that there will be an earthquake before a human being feels it, of course, without, without the machines or without this technology now. So even things have feelings, even things know that there is that something is going to happen. So that wall was about to collapse, was about to die. You could have taken some money for that. Al-Khadr said, okay, that's it. This is the parting between me and you. You said if I ask uh, you anything else, you will part and leave me. So we, will, we are leaving each other's right now. You are a messenger, you are a prophet, and your words are orders. You wanted that, and I have to fulfill this. Now, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Rahmatullahi alayna wa ala Musa, law labitha ma'a sahibihi la absar al-ajab, walakinnahu qal, in sa'altuka an shay'in ba'daha thalatu sahibni, qad balagta min ladunni udra. So may Allah have mercy upon, upon us and upon Musa alayhi salam. If he had stayed with his companion, a longer time, we would have seen wonders. If he had more patience, we would have seen wonders. We would have learned more wonderful stories, more stories. But he said, if I ask you anything after this, keep me not in your company. You have received an excuse from me. 
so we leave each other. You are excused to leave me. I am not going to be with you. I'm not going to bother you again. So what happened? Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَأُنَبِّئُكَ بِتَأْوِيلِ مَا لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرًا now that we are going to uh, leave each other, I'm going to tell you, I will tell you the interpretation, the explanation of those things over which you were not able to be patient. So this is what will happen and this is what we are going to uh, see next time, inshallah. I would like to end with a point that when someone dies, two places will weep for him. And, and that was mentioned in Surah, in, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ How would the sky and the earth cry when someone dies? The explanation for this is that the place where you do your sujood on earth will cry because you are not going to, to use it anymore for sujood. And the place where your deeds are going up to the sky will also cry because your deeds will be, will, will be done. Khalas, no more deeds. But Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says, told us that Whoever has uh, So when someone dies, his deeds are stopping, except of three things. صَدَقَةٌ جَارِيَةٌ Ongoing charity. أو علم ينتفع به Or some knowledge that he has passed and people are still using. أو ولد صالح يدعو له or if he has a righteous son or a righteous uh, offspring that would uh, just make dua for him. But what else? Let's say that someone does not have children and he has not passed, he is not a teacher, he, is, he did not pass any, any knowledge. He still has something. Sadaqatun jariya. Something that something good that he has done to people. He might have helped even if with a few pennies in building uh, a masjid or a hospital or in digging a well of water for some people to use. Or he planted something that he will be, uh, uh, that uh, people will be using or animals will uh, will be using. So this is the explanation for alimat nafsum ma qaddamat wa akharat. So the soul would know, would realize what it did when it was alive, ma qaddamat, wa ma akharat, and what were what the deeds it collected after death. So do not get uh, upset if you don't have children to, to, do not get sad if you don't have a ch children just to, to make dua for you after your death. Just keep, keep doing something that would benefit you from now after you die. Knowledge, knowledge is important, seek knowledge and uh, give knowledge. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, 
just spread anything that you heard from me, even if it's one ayah. And you can have this ongoing charity even after your death. You, you might say, okay, I'm not a teacher. I would say having good manners is spreading the good manners of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we have to learn, we have to learn to be able to know what to do. Sayyidina Musa knew that there is someone who is more knowledgeable than him. He, he decided to keep walking even if he is going to walk for hundreds of years. We have to seek knowledge. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته